Hello, and welcome to the Merlin Lock Podcast. I'm Merle. And I'm Lock. Set sail and low expectations for everything nerd, accompanied by a healthy, albeit shameful, helping a pointless banter, lack of focus, and questionably acquired knowledge. All right, to start us off today, this is something that I, I, I feel like I talk about a lot. And it's the value of a variety of personalities in your life, right? Now, I'm not talking about, like, uh, disorders of any kind with multiple personalities. <laughs> I'm talking about, like, like within... Yeah, but that's the <laughs> interesting ones. <laughs> no, I'm talking, I'm talking Never more a about... Never moment. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about the, uh, the, the friends you have in, in your in your friend group or, or relations that you have and, and just the, the variety of personalities that, that people bull, that people bull, <laughs> that people are capable of having. Uh, and, and it's something that I've always, always valued myself, right? When I, when I go friend to friend, um, and, and the different personalities that they have, the different, uh, quirks, uh, the different, uh, let's see, morals, beliefs, um, uh, views, whether they be political or otherwise. It's, it's always something that I've valued because I love the, I, I feel like it, it more, it helps you to round yourself off as a person, right? Like you, you like you, you'll have these, let's say you have these, these certain views, right? And you have these discussions with another friend and they have very, you know, very, very different views, uh, things that kind of some, sometimes it's, it, it's a, a thing where like you could clash heads at, um, in discussion about these things, but it helps to, kind of ground you, you know, I, I feel like if you get too carried away with your own views and you surround yourself with people that have the same exact views, like, I, I feel like that it, it doesn't round you off properly as a person. And, and, and you're like, if, if, if I feel like it humbles you and it, it, it helps you to see, uh, that, that not everybody can be exactly the same because, We've all grown up differently. We've been taught different things from our parents and our peers going to school, growing up where, where in the world that we, we did grow up. And, and I, I feel like it, it, it levels you out. It completely, it, it grounds you, uh, to a point where you're more capable of empathizing with, with so many more people and, and, and their beliefs. Now, I, I, I feel like, I feel like it's something that's often been, uh, you know, discouraged and, um, you know, especially on social media, like I'll, I'll often see these like motivational clips and stuff where people are like, you know, uh, you need to learn how to cut people out of your life, you know, people that are quote unquote toxic, which, like, I don't believe anybody is necessarily completely toxic. It's just that they have opposing views to you and, and sometimes you can butt heads, you know, and it, and it can, uh, you know, admittedly cause some, some, uh, small amount of duress, you know, like it, it, it might cause some kind of conflict. Sure. But I mean, you know, especially when you're, when you're an adult. I mean, there's no reason to come to that point. Like, why, why would you ever feel like if you were having one of these heated discussions that it has to end in you hating each other or resenting each other for these opposing views rather than try to uh, come up with a way to, to meet halfway? Instead, it's and 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 ground you both equally, right? Where where you can learn to empathize with one another, see each other's different views, and have a whole new perspective on on the world or or that that topic in particular. And instead, it's like 
people are saying that you need to cut these people out of your life, right? So that you can live a more, I don't know, be more pure in your, in your views. I, right? I, I don't, I don't get why people come to that, that point where they're, they're saying you need to cut certain people out of your life. I mean, they're, they're just doing it to say it and get attention themselves, but at least that's how I see it. Who are you to tell people who they should be taking out of their life? Like, it's up to them to decide, all right, this person has clearly been bad for my mental health, and I should probably take take my time, step away from them for, for a bit. And maybe what they should be really talking about is taking a step back from people who may be doing them wrong in some way or, you know, causing a problem to their, their mental state. Take a step back, come back to them some other time, and maybe have a discussion about it. Uh, just plain discussion. I'm sorry that I had to distance myself from you. This is kind of what I've been going through and, and, and hope that you can better understand each other. If you want that type of relationship with that person, maybe you don't want that type of relationship with that person. In that case, ghost them. Disappear. Just, <laughs> you, you, you don't really need to make it that big of a scene. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it's it's the easy option, right? Right. And so so people are always looking for, like, convenience, right? Uh, they're looking for the easy way out, which I get. I suppose the easy way out would be just to eliminate whatever that opposition is in your life, right? So, so like, my whole, my whole view on it is that, uh, like, personally, I, I don't like taking the 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 easy route right when it comes to relationships and things it's uh, it, it seems kind of kind of selfish i suppose like just this is just my opinion of course but but when i i feel more fulfilled when i take the time and i and i i show this sense of patience where i'll i'll you know, be more willing to give these people my time because, because I value them. Because, I mean, they're, they're a person, right? People are incredible. I mean, they're, they're like, we're, we're all so different from one another and cutting someone out with like, with so much potential and, and uh, so many interests and passions like it that's that just seems so valuable right and it and it's like i find difficulty in in cutting someone out for something so superfluous like like as as a, some kind of small uh you know opposing view right they have so many more qualities about them that i value and, no, they and don't. I don't want to so. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> Continue. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but no, it's 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 something that like I I find I find difficult to do, and it's not something that I've uh, I'm willing to do, uh, just to cut somebody out because I mean, I feel like if I were to do that, and I were to only you know, align with people that had the same exact views that I did, then my life personally would have so much less value because, because I don't have that, that perspective and I'm unwilling to learn about that perspective. Like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like my head would be in the clouds, right? Like, because because I would see the world one way, I would sur surround myself with other people that see this, the world one way, and I would never know the other side of things, right? Kind of like, kind of like with like rich folk, right? Like they're 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 well off. They, however, they come into money. I don't know, but. But they're, they're extremely wealthy and then they have these children, right? These children 
grow up in that home. All they know is this incredible amount of, of, of wealth and everything comes so easy and uh, they align themselves with other successful people because they're, they're um, encouraged to because it'll, because, you know, people are always encouraged to surround yourself with the kind of people that you want to become, right? And uh, these these kids will grow up wealthy. They'll surround themselves with other wealthy people. They'll become incredibly successful and blah, blah, blah. And they'll never, they'll never know the other side of things, you know, and, and they won't become like this well-rounded person because they're living in Neverland or whatever. That's fairy tale land. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, what, what, what's your, What's your views on that? Do you do you have like uh, any instances where you've found value in in these people with opposing views? Have you ever like cut people out? And and when you when you do, if you were to cut somebody out, is there is there like a, a certain breaking point for you? That there is plenty of breaking points that I've cut people out of my life. When you realize that some bad behaviors just never change that are not only doing you harm, but you see it happening to other people. You kind of go, I, d I really don't want to be a part of this anymore. And it's best that you just kind of cut ties and hope that they grow out of it. And if they don't grow out of it, then, you know, it, it no longer is your problem now. It's right. But, but that's, that's what I'm saying, right? Is if, if we're so willing to, cut people out right that are that are like act unreasonable and, and they're being harmful to themselves or to others do you not see like the the benefit of you being in their life someone that is more empathetic or caring towards other people and and yourself and you know maybe they can learn from you and you could influence them to become a more rounded person I used used to feel that way for certain things now. Like I, I still do think that sometimes people do need a little bit of influence. But if you give them too much, if you become too much of an influence, they are now dependent on you to hold them together. And that part of dependency, uh, depending on uh, what the relationship is, can be harmful. Yeah, it's no longer doing them any any good. They're not learning from it. They're just seeking you out next time they have the the issue, and you have to coax them through it. Uh, people have to be able to learn. You should not be able to depend on people. Uh, like, you, <laughs> all right, sorry. You should depend on people to a point, but if there is something that is happening frequently. You as the person with the issue should be able to realize that you're coming to the same person about that particular issue. What is going on? What are you doing wrong? There, there needs to be some self-reliance. Right. So, so what you're saying is that if you were in somebody's life and uh, they were acting unreasonable and you were trying to bring, bring this, this sense of balance to their life... You feel like they would, as as soon as they were to lose you as a friend, that they would just ultimately, you know, go back to the way they were. Yes. Okay. All right. No, I can I can see that, but I feel like that's finding that that growth together. It's it's hard to come up with with examples. In, in which it, it actually worked the amount of influence you have for one another from one another because i mean you'd have to spend a lot of time to achieve that wouldn't you right and that's a lot of undue stress on you and your you know your patience i suppose but but what would make it worth it to you so in in the event that years go by eventually say uh you cut yourself off from this person. You come back, you have that heartfelt moment. You you both kind of explain things that had happened, and then you moved on from it. Like, 
you've learned why why that person had left, right? From the the person who got ghosted, you you learn why that person left, what had happened, uh, what it was that you had done wrong. In case you weren't able to figure it out the first time. <laughs> Now, if this person re-enters your life and you now continue to do that said thing, I feel like that's a problem. So you're talking about um, this whole kind of reflection thing on the why. Is it? Do you think it would be awkward to be uh, upfront before you were willing to, you know, cut them out of your life? If you if you were to be just solely upfront with them and say something like. You know, and I would I would like to spend more time with you, but I get, I gotta I gotta you know excuse myself from you know this relationship that we have solely because I mean it's it's a little draining for me because of this that or the other whatever reason do do you think that'd be like too awkward a conversation for you to well, have all right so if we're talking me personally i'd i'd say i need time to calculate the words that i'm going to say <laughs> okay right so right some people might be able to already have the lines rehearsed in their head but especially if emotion is tied behind it I need to cut emotion off for the moment. I need to recalibrate, find the right words to say, and then come back to it. So a way to express it to them more with more elegance, I suppose. Right. Try to save some feelings. Because if you explode in a fit of emotion, it might not come out the way you hoped. No, I can I can understand that. Yeah, because I mean we all have those those moments of of insight after the fact, <laughs> like when you're sitting in the shower and you're like, oh, I wish I would have approached this situation differently. I wish I would have said this because it would have would have been much smoother, you know? Right. Yeah. No, I can I could definitely relate. And I'm I'm one person who likes to really get involved with the people that I that I, I'm talking to. So when I get to know somebody, I I try to really get a good understanding. And this is like that one-on-one -on -one contact. Like I have to be alone with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, really establish a conversation, a, a connection with them to really understand them. I can't do it in groups. <laughs> No, if I do it in groups, I single one person out and go, I'm going to get to know that person. <laughs> it's just hard to really put the information in and sink it into my head with a full group of people and say, I want to learn everything about everyone. So as far as like close friend groups go, right? Uh -huh. There's always this, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like sometimes I, 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 I think of it as, as shit talking, right? Like behind the person's back, you know, to the rest of the friend group. But it's not, it's not necessarily that. It's, it's more like, you know, when the friend group gets together and there's one person gone and we talk about like, oh man, there's this thing about the other friend that like really it bugs me sometimes, you know, and and we all we all talk about it and we're like yeah it bothers me sometimes too when when they do this that or the other and and we all we all figure out those problems and then you know next get together that that friend we were talking about is with the group and somebody else is gone and then we all talk about that person and we're like oh these certain things that they do is you know you know it bugs me and that and 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 it's a it's a constant it's a constant cycle that I feel a lot of friend groups go through. Um, we all have these these discussions with one another about uh, another person in the friend group that's not present, and it's 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 kind of funny because you know we talk we all the friend group knows like what the problems are uh -huh. right with these people. But we never tell the people 
what it is because they're our friends and we don't want to hurt their feelings. All right. Right. But <laughs> in order, in order to grow, I feel like we need to confront our problems. Right. Now, why, why is it that we're, instead of just getting together and being like, Hey, we, we know there, we could all sit down with one another and we could all, uh, express like the, the things that, you know, hurt us about the other person, about another person in the group, you know, or, or something that, you know, is, is a struggle for us to like wrap our heads around. Like it's not, it's not something that we like necessarily hate about a, a person in the friend group, but it's, it's something that we can't understand and it's hard for us to cope with together. So if we could, if we could express to them what what that problem was and everything could be smoother and then they could express, you know, a uh, uh, issue that they have with some of the friend group. And like, why, why can't we ever have that discussion? Is it? Uh, I, <laughs> I feel, I feel like it's a, a, it's a taboo thing now. Now you used to hear about people having interventions for people about the, whatever it is that, they see as an issue, right? You don't hear about it in our generations. I, I feel in part, now this is my way of thinking about it, is would I want to have a conversation with that person about this? I even think about it if people were to come to me about that that specific thing, how would I react? Yeah, no, that's the thing that, that I'm thinking of, right? So so if you were to have one of these quote-unquote interventions, right? But I'm I'm talking about like not... Not a intervention, not something where every, <laughs> it, you get the if one you person. have a full group of people saying, "Hey, this is what your problem is." You go, "It feels like an intervention." Well, no, no, that—that's what I'm saying. No, I'm—I'm I'm saying for it to be, you know, everybody to be equal in the moment because the intervention suggests that we just attack the one person, right? <laughs> they walk in the yeah. room, you're like, "Listen." Whoa. Listen here, bud. <laughs> Take a no, seat. I'm talking Take a about, seat right here. I'm talking about like us getting together. We all talk about each other, right? Like where we all discuss and we find a common ground, right? Now it's you know, <laughs> admittedly, you know, it, like in theory, it sounds like a, a reasonable solution to to solve these issues, but in practice. I do, I do have the, the thought in my mind where it would just continually escalate until the entire friend group is broken up because we keep berating each other and it gets increasingly more hostile until, until everybody gets fed up with each other and leaves. Yeah. I, I, I do, I do see the reasoning of like where, why that's not a common thing. So, so I'm wondering if it's just something that, uh, we just have to, you just have to cope with or, you know, because like if, if, if these, if, if there's a problem with a person and they don't know it's a problem, how can they ever try to, you know, round themselves out better? And, and that's the whole, that's where the problem lies, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Like, cause nobody's willing to express it because, you know, they're trying to save their feelings because they value that person as a friend and they love, have so many awesome qualities about them. But then when you bring up that one issue, they feel like, you know, like, oh, they don't like this one thing about me. So, so they don't like anything about me. Kind of like this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of like the, you know, measuring the extremes when you're, when a little, you know, the tiniest little facet of your, of your personality is attacked. You feel like, oh, they don't like me at all now right. or something. Yeah. Right. I, 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 I feel like we do get a little, <laughs> people tend to get a little dramatic. <laughs> I, when it comes to moments like that where I, I feel like somebody needs, a conversation they need something to be said to get their attention i'll wait I'll, I'll try to wait it off for what i feel is the perfect moment i mean it might not be perfect 
meaning like the topic might not be great, but uh, if I see the opportunity, I'm like, I feel like now's the time to maybe bring it up that I notice this and like it's a concern and that's it. Not say you should fix this, blah, 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 blah. No, like I'm just, I'm concerned about you as a friend, as close to family, whatever, make it a sad, sappy movie moment <laughs> and <laughs> then we move on from there and uh, uh, it's like the the conversations that you have like by the fire in the white chairs you know at night right no i'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that's like one of those conversations or even like uh let's say movie moment friends down and out they're sitting by the r- river or some water source there's dim lights and they're some they're, kind of body of water <laughs> some sort of bat- body of water and they're giving you some some s- sad thing that happened to them and you're like yeah uh i've been noticing this i i don't know and by then, the way you're an asshole <laughs> by the way you're an asshole uh and then they cry about it you hug it out and <laughs> End credits. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a movie! <laughs> oh shit! Thank you for joining us on the Marlin Lock podcast. If you enjoyed this banter, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com/slash Merle and Lock, or simply follow the link in the description. Thank you.